So friends, uh, now that we are at the end of the tutorial, I thought we could do a simple project wrap up. So Datfrog supports serving static files. What static files are, are just images, text, or even HTML files. So you might want to have a sim create, uh, create a simple HTML as a landing page, a landing site, or a landing um, page for your that talks about your mobile app. I think it's a nice way to actually use Datfrog for that. So we are, with that, you, you can be able to create a web app. Let's try and do that. And to serve uh, static files, how Datfrog serves that it static files is by placing your files in this folder over here called public. And so let me let's just create a web app, a simple web app using Datfrog, so that you can get to see what I mean. So I'll just navigate to the public like that and then I'll proceed to create a web app. I'll leave the link that explains uh, web apps, uh, creation of web apps using that uh, so that you can have a clear understanding. So I'll just call my web app task list and it will create a web app for me and for me to actually view it Since my um, that frog uh, dev server is on, I can just proceed to my browser. Let's go to the browser and try and run localhost 8080. Wait, we, ne we need to run the web app. So by running it, you have to add, pass in another command here. Let me pick this. So I'll just navigate to task list and then run web dev sub just a minute so it, it's running so let's head over to our browser and try that again so if you run this, if you run it without running the web dev server, it will call the root, the index uh, in the root project. But if you run the web dev server, it will proceed to go and call the application, the web app that we have created and it's in the public folder. So this is an, another way of uh, using Datfrog. You can use a Datfrog to create your own simple web app. And this web app could be a good place for you to advertise or talk about the app that you're creating. I think uh, um, I might create an article talking about the powers of having landing sites or landing pages for your own mobile projects or mobile applications. So basically, this is it. And if you head over to the code itself, the logic is in the web folder, main.dat. You can see your dat app is running and it's outputted using a low level html so simple as that you're able to create a simple landing page i just thought to mention that uh, as a quick one and also you may have like images that you want to be uh, loaded from the back end to the front end you can also use public the public folder for that you can just create a folder called images and then just add um, any image over here. Let me look for an image. So there's an image like that one. So to be able to access it, I can proceed to my browser and just images coding.png. Okay, I think of JPG. So there we have it, uh, just running uh, localhost 8080, specifying the folder and the name of the image. So I had to close the, the web app from running for it to display. So maybe that's something to play around with and see how to 
uh, do it so you can have images that you want to be called from the back end instead of having to stack them with your mobile app uh, it can reduce the weight of your app as well so that's another idea of using uh, the support that that rog has in serving static files great so uh, we have focused on so many con a number of concepts in the back end on the back end framework we started by defining what that frog is and how important it is we also looked at the installation process. We did a short video showing the DAT basics for those who are new to DAT. We looked at roots, middleware, and dependency injections, which are like the major main concepts of DAT frog. We also explored data serialization and how it works. We looked at using web sockets, um, and all this we have been able to do an end to end from the Flutter app to the from the client to the server, or the Flutter app to our DAT frog backend project. We also looked at Firebase integration, MongoDB integration, and PostgreSQL integration, which are just three databases that we decided to play around with. One of uh, the cloud databases, and there is also a relational database to play around with. Then we also looked at data caching, and mainly with there's a local one with DatFrog, but also there is we tried integrating it with Redis. Next, we have session management. Uh, we also looked at that in the aspect where sessions are used for bearer authentication, which is the next point, which is authentication. We looked at two types of authentication, basic and bearer. And lastly, we also looked at using REST API, how to integrate with other third-party APIs on our own backend project. But the one thing that we haven't looked at is deployment. And however much uh, that frog also uh, provides a Docker file for the backend project for you to actually host your backend to any cloud platform, either Google Cloud or Amazon S3. Uh, uh, there's still a learning curve on that face on my end, so I couldn't like uh, I couldn't explain in depth because the idea is actually that the tutorials are for an in-depth understanding of things in the most simplest way. So I may be able to do it. I could do it very quickly, but I wanted uh, I want to be able to. There's so many concepts um, involved in the deployment phase, understanding what Docker is, what maybe things like Kubernetes are, and also in the cloud phase, how things run, how things work, serverless um, uh, computing and all that. So I found it to be quite large and just mentioning terminologies within the tutorial just for the sake of it wouldn't make sense for me. It's the same thing we did with Serverpod where we didn't do authentication but I ended up creating a user authentication tutorial for you guys on the different uh, types of user authentication faces that we have. So once we get a grasp on the best way to actually explain this uh, concept, I'll definitely share it and add it in the tutorial. So with that, I hope you have enjoyed the tutorial. Please do not forget to subscribe and share with your friends and also comment. And in case of any questions, you can share in the comments down below so that you can engage and learn together. So see you on the next one.